Today, we're taking a look at the biggest update to the California High Speed Rail Project, one of the largest and most controversial infrastructure projects in the United States. The project has been in the works for years, but updates in recent months, specifically October and November, have revealed significant and noteworthy changes. So what's new is it on track and closer to its goal? Let's explore the major changes in the 2025 update to the California High Speed Rail Project in today's episode of On the Trains. Okay, let's get straight to the points. Latest updates. As part of a larger effort to reduce costs and increase speed, new design and route changes are reshaping how California High Speed Rail is developed. According to the latest update from Newsweek on November 5, 2025, California High Speed Rail Authority CHSRA officials are rethinking their proposed high-speed rail route through Kern County to reduce costs, speed up construction, and minimize impacts to local residents and businesses. Specifically, CHSRA wants to reduce the amount of land that needs to be cleared, avoid residential areas and areas with complex land uses. Spokesman Kyle Simmerly, in designing the Merced to Bakersfield extension, we are trying to reduce costs by reducing road rights of way and limiting land acquisition for construction. These changes were presented publicly at a Shafter City Council meeting, although local officials in Bakersfield and Kern County have not yet received formal notice of the proposed revisions. As planned approved in 2019, the Shafter to Bakersfield line would be approximately 23 miles long, running southeast and east from Poplar Avenue in Shafter to Highway 99, then continuing on an elevated platform to the Bakersfield station at F Street and Golden State Avenue. The line has been mired in controversy and environmental litigation over the years, with alignment modifications agreed upon in 2015 and 2017 to minimize impacts to local communities. The Merced-Bakersfield line part of the 171-mile initial operating segment IOS and representing about 35% of Phase 1 of the project is currently in active design and construction with an estimated cost of $36.75 billion and a target operational date of 2032. To date, approximately 70 miles of continuous guideway, about 59% have been completed along with 54 of 57 major civil structures while 32 structures are still under construction and six have yet to begin. Construction across Madera, Fresno, Kings, and Tulare counties continues to advance steadily, marking significant progress toward completing California's first high-speed rail corridor. The Hanford Viaduct, a major project, is scheduled to be completed in 2026, marking the end of the entire Central Valley section and will become a standalone test track for the freeway system. So what other updates are there besides these major changes? Let's find out more. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to always receive the latest news about the rail system. In October-November 2025, several important milestones were achieved, most notably the completion of the Hanford-Armona road grade separation in Kings County on November 1, 2025. The structure was completed in less than a year and will allow traffic to pass safely beneath the high-speed rail tracks, significantly improving traffic flow and emergency response times. Final finishing work is expected to be completed by the end of the year. Avenue 17 grade separation in Madera County was also completed on October 30, 2025, transforming a cul-de-sac into a BNSF overpass with a walkway and 21 precast concrete beams. Some temporary routes such as West Avenue and Weber Avenue Fresno County were closed until November 11, 2025 for construction along with Lacey Boulevard, Kings County, until November 15, 2025. In addition to lowering the maximum operating speed from about 250 miles per hour to 220 miles per hour, CHSRA has also adopted new engineering approaches to further reduce costs and shorten construction time. According to CEO Ian Chudry in an interview with Streets Blog USA on October 30, 2025, the design team reviewed six to seven areas for improvement, including track gradients and tunnel requirements. Initially, engineers designed the route to be as flat as possible based on traditional U.S. freight rail standards. However, after studying European and Japanese systems, the team decided to allow slightly steeper grades, similar to those used internationally, eliminating nearly 70% of the tunnels originally planned. We realized that by adopting proven high-speed rail standards from Europe and Japan, we could reduce tunnel length from about 16 miles to just three, saving around $14 billion in total construction costs, Chudry explained. 
These design optimizations mark a major shift toward more realistic and cost-effective engineering, reflecting lessons learned from global best practices rather than older conservative U.S. rail design methods. Do these developments put the project on track or are there still challenges to overcome? Impacts and Challenges While changes to the route and design have helped to mitigate negative impacts and limit impacts to local communities, the project still faces significant challenges, particularly related to scheduling and coordination with stakeholders. The rerouting of the route through Kern County to limit land acquisition poses a difficult legal and negotiating challenge. Constantly changing route options can increase uncertainty and create negative reactions from residents' businesses and local governments. The lack of transparent and timely communication between the rail agency and Bakersfield and Kern County governments has created confusion and may lead to delays in approvals and implementation. These delays could extend and directly impact the overall project schedule, putting the 2032 operational plan at risk. Coordination with local authorities and other stakeholders, including property owners and communities, requires a very close and flexible relationship management strategy. Timely handling of conflicts over land use Right site clearance and environmental protection requirements is crucial to avoid protracted disputes that negatively affect construction progress. Lack of consensus at this stage can disrupt the supply chain increase costs and undermine the confidence of investors and partners. In addition, adjusting the construction and operation plan of the Merced, Bakersfield section also affects the ability to synchronize infrastructure and integrate with other segments of the high-speed rail network. If not carefully managed and planned, this can cause resource imbalances, making some segments less efficient or lacking seamless connectivity with the rest of the system. Finally, the pressure on schedule when the project is in the critical phase of preparing for testing also creates a big challenge. Ensuring the completion of key projects such as Hanford Viaduct on time for testing requires close coordination between contractors, local authorities, and functional agencies. Any incident delay or legal problem can lead to widespread delays affecting the operation plan of the entire project. Financing and Private Partnerships P3 Model The California High Speed Rail Project is receiving significant financial resources with a total commitment of $29.3 billion, of which $6.8 billion, about 23%, comes from federal sources, and $22.5 billion, about 77%, from the state budget. Notably, in September 2025, the California State Legislature approved a stable funding agreement from the Cap and Invest program providing about $1 billion per year, creating a solid momentum for the first high-speed project in the country. In November 2025, CEO Ian Chudry announced a plan to call for investors through the public-private partnership P3 model. The partner selection process is expected to take place from November 2025, and be completed around May-June 2026. To strengthen investor confidence, the state of California has also introduced a $20 billion state-backed guarantee, which CEO Ian Chudry described as a critical measure to secure the agency's first private partnership by mid-2026, according to the High Speed Rail Alliance. This guarantee is expected to serve as financial assurance for private investors reducing perceived risks and accelerating negotiations within the upcoming P3 selection process. This P3 model not only focuses on building the railway line but also integrates high-tech infrastructure such as fiber-optic cable 5G broadband along the route and connects with the Southwest Expressway network including Las Vegas. Promoting the public-private partnership model is considered a strategic step to attract private capital reduce the financial burden on the state budget, and increase project management efficiency. However, the project is also facing a major challenge from the federal government under President Trump cutting another $175 million in funding in 2025. This cut has led to an investigation by the Federal Railroad Administration, FRA, and caused a lot of criticism from CEO Ian Chudry. In response, the state of California is taking legal steps to sue the federal government and is expected to request additional funding from the state budget in 2026 to ensure the project's progress. Without adequate and stable funding, the project may be delayed or reduced in scale affecting the state's economic development and connectivity goals. Therefore, close coordination between levels of government and attracting private investment are decisive factors for the success of the project in the next phase. Outlook and Next Steps the completion of the Central Valley section and the plan to mobilize private capital through the P3 model promise to create momentum to accelerate progress and improve financial efficiency for the entire project. 
However, pressure from federal funding cuts and the complexity of coordination with local governments requires stakeholders to continuously adjust strategies and strengthen cooperation in the coming years, ensuring stable funding, maintaining construction progress, and controlling costs and construction quality will be the main challenges. The success of the project will not only mean connecting traffic, but also have a profound impact on socioeconomic development, reducing pollution, and improving transportation capacity for the state of California. In an interview, CEO Ian Chudry emphasized that the project should not become a political football, but rather be seen as the foundation for true American high-speed rail, something the nation has envisioned for decades. I'm 1,000% confident that once the trains are running at high speed, the public will be asking for more. And when people start riding it, and we begin generating revenue from this system, that money should be reinvested to expand and build more as we go, he said. His remarks reflect both optimism and a long-term vision for a self-sustaining, expanding rail network that could redefine how Americans think about transportation. The next steps from completing the sections to signing the P3 contract and resolving legal issues will determine the future of the project. Residents and investors expect this project to be not only a symbol of technological innovation, but also a testament to the perseverance responsibility and ability to overcome difficulties in infrastructure development in the United States.